the SPE uh, Foundation funds the SPE Distinguished Lecturer Series to assure that uh, local sections all over the world have access to uh, recent technology topics. I would like to uh, acknowledge the SPE uh, Foundation for funding uh, and sponsoring this talk. I'd like to thank the SPE staff for arranging my travel, and I would like to thank my employer, Tesco, for making this time available for me to do this. Over the next few minutes, what we would like to do is look at the topic, drilling with casing, what it can and can't do for an asset. Even if you're not uh, actively involved in drilling, I think you will find that this topic is of interest to you because it's one of the technologies that we're using to access more difficult reserves as we explore uh, all over the world. Drilling with casing is a relatively new technology in terms of commercialization. Uh, most of the major operators have actually used it or in the process of using it. What I would like to do then is, uh, as we talk about this is show you that the technology is, is uh, something of interest, is new, is something that's very highly rated by the industry. Uh, one of the ways you can look at that is simply that uh, the, uh, one of the talks that we had uh, last year talked about 10 technologies to invest in for the decade. One of those topics was drilling with casein. As we look at this, what we'd like to do is talk about what it is, uh, how it can help you, and just generally work through an overview of, of the topic. We'll start with a definition of, of uh, drilling with casein. Uh, and I, I may use the terms casein drilling, drilling with casein, or casein while drilling uh, interchangeably. Uh, different uh, parts of the industry use different terms. But what we talk about, uh, no matter which term I use, is a process for simultaneously drilling and casing a well where the well casing is used uh, as the drill string, the casing is rotated as needed for drilling, and the casing is cemented in the well at TD. There are several different types of uh, casing drilling systems. There is a non-retrievable system, and basically this is a quite simple system. Uh, there's a drill bit placed on the end of the casing. Uh, the casing is rotated, and you simply drill the casing to the casing point. At that point, you cement the well, and uh, then that bit may be drilled out or not if it's the last string of casing. Uh, in all cases, when you use this type of a system, though, the casing must be rotated. And it's somewhat limited in the sense that it doesn't allow you to do directional trajectory changes. It doesn't allow you to change the bit um, if the bit wears out. But, of course, uh, there are some applications where this is quite sufficient and, in fact, is a, a very good system to use. Another type of system is a retrievable bottom hole assembly type system where the uh, bottom hole assembly that's placed on the bottom of the casing can be retrieved and replaced at will. This provides a much more flexible system. Uh, a mud motor can be used to minimize the casing rotations. Multiple bit runs can be made per section so that uh, you can uh, drill much harder intervals where the bit might would wear out otherwise. Uh, you can drill directional and straight sections. Uh, in fact, you can do almost anything with a retrievable drilling assembly uh, that you can do in a conventional drilling. There are a number of providers that provide these systems to our industry. One of those is, is Weatherford International, which has a uh, drilling with casing system. This is primarily a drillable bit that's placed on the bottom of the casing that goes by the name of uh, drill shoes. Uh, Hughes Christensen provides a similar system. It's made uh, slightly differently, but it also is a, a drillable shoe. Tesco, the company that I work for, provides both the drillable shoe and the full, fully retrievable system. Uh, then there are a number of operators that are actually providing what I would call homegrown systems. That is, they're taking bits and pieces from our industry putting them together so that they can accomplish the same thing without using any one vendor to provide a complete system. And then there are a number of service providers that are focusing on supporting the technology. One good example of that would be the uh, case and connection companies that are, are providing connections that are specifically designed for drilling racing that have the, the uh, uh, 
fatigue resistance and the torque resistance to uh, allow the loads that we would experience whenever we drill the casing. Now, let's look a little bit at what might be involved if we wanted to uh, consider drilling with casing. We can divide that up into equipment and engineering aspects. Uh, on the equipment side, we have to ha handle the casing at the surface. We have to be able to pick the casing up off of the pipe racks, uh, uh, connect it to the drill string, drill it down, and then do the same thing again. We have to be able to protect the casing as we drill with it so that we don't damage it. And we have to have some sort of tools that go on the bottom end of the casing that actually does the drilling. And then on the engineering side, we need to be able to plan the well, taking into consideration the nuances of the casing drilling system. Uh, there are certain things that we do when we drill with casing that might not be strictly applicable to uh, what we do if we drill with uh, conventional drill pipe and drill collars. Our flow rates might diff be different. The uh, mud uh, properties might be different. Uh, then there are operational practices that we might uh, uh, need to adjust to account for uh, special uh, attributes of, of the casing drilling system. Uh, some of those might be things like uh, we would normally make short trips with a conventional drill string to protect the hole and prevent problems from occurring. But when you drill with casing, those things are not necessary. Now, as we look at handling the casing, what we really need to be able to do is pick up the casing off of the uh, uh, V-door of the drilling rig and place it in the drill string and do that in a safe manner and do it in a relatively quick manner. When we drill conventionally, uh, we pick up uh, drill pipe quite easily. We have spent uh, a number, you know, number of tens of years developing the uh, capability and the special equipment to handle drill strings in, uh, in triples and to put it in the drill string and to make it up and to do that very quickly, very safely. And when we drill with casing, we need to do the same thing, but the equipment that we use for drilling with conventional drill string is not uh, adequate to support that function. So what we use for that is a special case and drive tool as shown, shown here. Uh, that tool is, is positioned in the drilling rig immediately below the uh, top drive and what it does is it allows us to grab onto a joint of pipe, pull it up into the vertical position, set it down into the stump and then slide the uh, the stinger with a packer system down into the joint of pipe to uh, seal around it. The uh, uh, spear has some uh, slips or uh, grippers on it that grip the inside of the casing to allow us to, uh, to uh, hold the pipe sufficiently tightly so that we can apply rotational torque to make up the casing to its proper torque and to uh, drill the casing down to apply drilling torque and to, in fact, hold the entire weight of the string of pipe as, as we drill it down. As we drill with the casing, we have to protect the casing because as we drill with it as drillers, uh, it's our drill string. Uh, we handle it much like a drill string. We rotate it sometimes as fast as 150 to 160 RPM. Uh, we, we do things with it that you might not normally do with casing. But once it's, it's uh, drilled to the casing point and cemented in place, it's turned over to the produ producing department and it becomes their casing that stays in the well, that protects the well, that gives them access to the uh, hydrocarbon reservoirs, maybe for 20 years. And in order to protect the casing as we drill with it, we have to have some uh, special equipment for that. Some of that equipment is the uh, centralizers that we would use to uh, assure that the pipe is centered in the hole, particularly for cementing because we can't use many of the uh, uh, conventional cementing uh, tools that might be too fragile to use while we were drilling. We also have to be able to protect the, the couplings uh, to prevent them from wearing. Certainly when we drill with drill pipe, we have hard banding on the drill pipe that uh, prevents the tool joints from wearing. So whenever we drill with casing in abrasive rock, we need to do the same thing. And the way we do that is we have a uh, wear band that's about four inches long that slides onto the casing up against the coupling. Uh, as you can see here, the wear band is adjacent 
the coupling, it is crimped in place. That is, we uh, elastically deform the uh, wear band down onto the casing to make a, a mechanical grip so that it does not move. And then on the wear band, there is a section about one inch wide of a tungsten carbide hard banding material that is very similar to the hard banding we use on drill pipe. Now let's look a little bit at the uh, drilling tools that we actually use on the bottom of the casing. Uh, we'll first look at the more simpler tools, and that is the non-retrievable casing bits. There's a number of those available. I'm showing you some samples of things that are available from uh, one of the providers. These uh, uh, drillable bits are, are manufactured with a steel outer section that screws onto the casing, but an aluminum inner section that is, can then be drilled out. The blades themselves are aluminum, and it may have uh, tungsten carbide cutters or TSP. There's thermally stable diamond cutters on it. Uh, there's a version that has actually steel blades that uh, has polycrystalline diamond cutters on it that's much tougher. And the way that bit is used is once you drill to TD with it, uh, you drop a ball, pressure up, and as you can see in the lower photograph, a center plug expands down. That plug is aluminum and again drillable, and it deforms the blades back out of the way so a conventional drill bit can simply drill through the uh, bit once uh, the casing is cemented in place. When you look at retrievable systems, uh, it's quite a bit more complex. Uh, that's required to give us the uh, variable functionality that we need. And what we need to be able to do is attach a tool to the bottom end of the casing in such a way that we can uh, retrieve it from the casing and replace it while the casing is still in the wellbore. The way we do that as we have a tool that is specifically designed as the interface between the casing and the tools that are below. Uh, this interface, we will refer to it as a DLA or drill lock assembly. It includes seal components. Uh, it includes uh, mechanical components that torsionally lock it into a profile nipple on the casing. Uh, it's axially locked to the casing. And it includes features that allow us to retrieve it from the wellbore without swabbing the well. In fact, you normally would retrieve this with wireline, although you can retrieve it with drill pipe. Uh, when you do that, uh, because it has the packers, uh, packer cups on it, you would need some way to allow fluid to bypass around the packer cups to prevent swabbing the well. And in fact, we do that, and you can, in fact, move the case in, reciprocate it, and circulate as the bottom hole assembly is being retrieved through the case in and run back in through the case in. Below the case in, uh, for a retrievable system, you will always need a tool that functions as an underreamer. Uh, you need that because the bottom hole assembly must be sized to pass through the case in, but yet it must drill a hole that's big enough for the case in to pass through. For example, if we use a uh, drill with 7-inch casing, uh, all of the tools need to be able to pass through the 7-inch casing, so they must have a diameter of roughly 6 inches, but yet the hole must be drilled to uh, 8 and 3 quarter or so in order for the casing to pass through, and we accomplish that with an underreamer. So the simplest bottom hole assembly that we might use with a retrievable assembly consists of a pilot bit, and for the example that we were talking about for a 7-inch casing, the pilot bit might be 6 or 6 and 8 of an inch diameter. Uh, you might have a stabilizer or two right above the bit to provide deviation control. And then above that would be the underreamer, and it would be positioned very close to the casing shoe. However, when we, when we drill with the retrievable uh, type drilling tools, the bottom hole assembly can be quite complex. Uh, one of the things that is uh, being used quite readily in our industry today for directional work is rotary steerable tools to provide the ability to drill directional wells much more efficiently than we have been able to do in the past. And so we can use those tools to drill directional wells uh, uh, with casing. And in fact, we have done that. Uh, have drilled commercial wells up to about 70 degrees inclination using rotary steerable tools. And if you use those tools, then the bottom hole assembly would be something like we're showing here, where there is a bit, the rotary steerable tool, uh, MWD for measurement and guidance, uh, stabilizers, underreamer, 
and maybe even a motor up inside the casing to rotate that entire bottom hull assembly to minimize the amount of rotation and fatigue and wear on the casing. Uh, we have used this t these type tools in the North Sea, uh, in the U.S., uh, and in other places. You could also drill directionally with a conventional steerable motor assembly uh, that would look somewhat similar to this, but uh, be a little bit different in the way the tools would be assembled. Now then, so we've shown you that there are tools available that allow us to drill with casing. Now what I would like to do is spend the rest of the talk talking about some examples of where we have used the, the technology, what benefits it might, might have, and really to focus in on the assets that you might have and the problems you might have and the things that you might uh, be able to use the technology for and, uh, and an improvement. Certainly, if you think about the process of drilling with casing and you can drill to t uh, the casing point and cement the casing in without having to trip the drill pipe out and run the casing in, it should be a faster process. And in fact, it is. But for uh, relatively inexpensive wells, land wells and whatnot, the, the time savings might not be sufficient to justify the cost of the technology. Whereas on uh, very expensive wells, offshore wells, certainly it could. What we've actually seen is that most times the technology is justified by the fact that it reduces uh, trouble time and it reduces time that we normally engineer in and allocate for preventing trouble. One study looking at the Gulf of Mexico found that roughly 24 percent of the time from spud to TDF a well was actually spent on unscheduled events. Uh, there was a number of things in there, uh, but about a third of the time of that time was lost circulation, stuck pot, kicks, and uh, sloughing shale. All of those things we have found that drilling with casing will uh, primarily uh, minimize and in some cases totally eliminate. Not shown on this graph is the amount of time that we spend in trying to prevent trouble. If we know that we're going to have lost circulation or we know that there's a probability of having stuck pipe, then we begin to do remedial things that are planned and anticipated and so they don't show up as trouble time because we engineer them into the well process. But many of those things can actually be eliminated whenever we uh, drill with casing. We're also able to uh, drill wells that might not be economically feasible to drill otherwise. One way that we can do that is we eliminate a casing string. A casing string is generally very expensive, and if you have a process that eliminates at least one casing string, you can make the wells be more cost effective. Now we'll look at some specific examples of how that has been uh, accomplished. Uh, this first example is from the Boha Bay of China, and this is where the technology was used simply because it was a faster process. In this case, the operator had a new platform and he wanted to batch set all of the 13 3.8 surface casing for the uh, entire well, uh, or entire platform. Uh, and to do that, what he did was use one of the drillable bits. You would make up the drill bit onto the bottom of the casing. You'd make up a float collar in the casing. So basically, you could drill to the casing point and immediately pump cement uh, and skid the rig over to the next uh, uh, slot and rig up for the next one. What you can see is that uh, the first one went a little bit slowly. Uh, improvement uh, quite steadily over the next half a dozen wells. And by the time the uh, last well was drilled, the drilling time for these wells was down to about uh, eight hours or so compared to initial 30 hours. Uh, in that particular project, the operator saved about a million and a half dollars in doing this. So this is an example where it's a rel relatively costly operation. Uh, the technology was used simply because it's much faster. The next example is a, an example from the Gulf of Mexico where a simple drillable uh, bit was used to drill through a trouble zone. Uh, this particular bit is one provided by Hughes Christensen. Uh, the a particular application was that there was a low pressure thief zone that was immediately above the uh, uh, reservoir. So the normal process was to drill down to the, close to the top of the thief zone, set the casing, drill through the thief zone, 
and set a liner and then drill into the reservoir because we had, had to uh, isolate the reservoir and the, and the thief zone because of the pressure environments. In this particular case, uh, the operator desired to be able to eliminate that liner. Uh, the well was a directional well, so what he did was drill directionally down to close to the top of the thief zone. At that point, he tripped out with a conventional directional drilling assembly, picked up the casing with the uh, uh, drillable shoe, uh, cement float collar, uh, and stabilization sufficiently to prevent the uh, well bore from losing inclination, uh, and drilled through the, the uh, low pressure thief zone. In doing that, uh, what, what uh, happened was there was no fluid losses. Uh, they were able to maintain the inclination, and by saving the liner, they saved about $800,000 on the well. Now, one of the things about this is it points out the uh, idea that drilling through a low pressure zone with casein often uh, minimizes or even eliminates fluid losses. That has been one of the things that we have found to be one of the most significant benefits of drilling with casein. Now, what we know is there, there have been lots of people that drill with casein. Almost universally, they have reported this phenomena that when they drill with casein, they're able to drill a wide variety of pressures uh, that are open at one time. Uh, there's minimum uh, loss circulation. What's not so widely agreed upon is the exact mechanism that causes this. One thing uh, that possibly causes it, we believe, is, is certainly a large contributing factor is the casing is not straight. It is relatively crooked. As you rotate the casing, it rubs on the borehole wall and it grinds up the cuttings so that the cuttings uh, build a mechanical filter cake on the borehole wall and build an impermeable filter cake to prevent the lost fluid. There are other explanations that uh, involve the stress cage effect where maybe uh, in combination to grinding up the cuttings, these cuttings pack uh, small fractures and in fact increase the uh, strength of the formation. What we do know is that a, a number of people have uh, conducted field tests where they've tried to prove and have in fact proven that the drilling with casein does in fact reduce lost circulation. This is one of those cases in where uh, three offset wells in a particular area that was drilled uh, immediately before the well uh, drilled with casein shown on, uh, on the right was drilled. Uh, the three offset wells were drilled conventionally. Each of those had problems associated with lost circulation. The first two uh, had several cement jobs that were required to uh, seal the lost zones and in fact they ultimately required a five and a half inch liner to be set. The third offset actually drilled to case in point, but uh, as, the, as the drill string was being withdrawn from the well, the case in, uh, uh, the, or the drill string got stuck due to losses uh, and was left in the well and they had to sidetrack around it. The case in drill well was drilled through this exact same zones uh, with 10 days compared to 19 days with no substantial losses whatsoever. So if you look at that a little bit closer to understand what the benefit there is, uh, this uh, slide is showing the pore pressure and the frack gradient of that particular field. Uh, if you do a conventional casing design, what you find is that you would need four strings of pipe to cement uh, uh, the production string in place. And that's because there is a weak zone up uh, fairly shallow in this three to 4,000 foot range. That weak zone then determines how deep you can drill uh, with, with that intermediate string of pipe. Uh, but there's a transition zone in the pore pressure that requires that you get deeper than you might get with the mud weight that will sustain the frack gradient at the weak zone. So in order to get around that, you can use four strings of pipe, or you can literally uh, assume some risk and say that if you don't quite make it, you will uh, seam it, uh, the, the uh, lost zones back up and uh, deal with it that way. And ultimately, if it doesn't work, you can set a liner. Alternately, if you drill with casein, you can in fact plan the well, knowing that you can get much closer to the fright gradient uh, without sustaining the losses. It allows you to push the casing point uh, to uh, into the transition zone, which then makes it very easy for for you to drill all the way to TD uh, with with the next string of pipe. 
Uh, in this field, that has been done a, a little over 160 times without a failure. Uh, on the year before the uh, operator started using case and drilling, there were five wells lost and simply abandoned because of problems related to the losses and the pressure zone down below. There is, in fact, uh, an example of where uh, production has been increased by using the case and drilling process. Now that may sound a little bit far-fetched, but when you think about it, uh, one of the things that damages our reservoirs is a loss of mud and mud, whole mud into the, into the reservoir. And in this particular case, there were a number of sands in this field that had been produced for roughly 40 years. Uh, the uh, some of those sands were very broad and were drawn down to fairly low pressure. Some of them were smaller and actually had uh, reservoir pressures when you're virgin pressures. And so what happened when you drill conventionally, you had the lost circulation problem where you lost literally thousands of barrels of fluid into the reservoir. That caused drilling problems and drilling costs when you did it. But more importantly, uh, it, it uh, damaged the reservoir. And because of the losses, it was difficult to get a good cement job. You needed to have a good cement job because some of these sands were water wet. And as you uh, uh, went to produce them, if you had gas sands and water sands that would communicate, then you had production problem. So the operator in this, this field decided to, uh, uh, after he had difficulty drilling conventionally, he decided to uh, try uh, drilling with casing. He did three wells. Uh, did them very successfully in terms of drilling performance, uh, cheaper than he did otherwise. And then he put the wells on production for about uh, six months to watch them to see what happened. And he found that the production, in fact, increased, as you would expect, because the fluid loss was much less than uh, uh, he had had from the uh, uh, conventional wells. And so he then came back and drilled 54 more wells, or a total of 57 wells in the field. Uh, and basically it cut the drilling time in half, it doubled the production rate, and it doubled the ultimate production. So in conclusion, uh, as we talk about this topic of drilling with casing and think about it, I hope I've shown you that there's an advantage for the technology. We have the capability to provide the technology all over the world. There's been wells drilled with casing in South America, in the Far East, in Europe, uh, uh, the United States, Canada, um, a uh, wide variety of, of, of uh, uh, locations, uh, wells drilled that are as simple as uh, shallow vertical surface strings of casing, and wells that were drilled with casing that are as deep as 12,000 feet, uh, complex uh, uh, directional wells where there's a significant build and turn in the well. And so uh, as, as we conclude, I would like you to think about your assets and your particular applications and say, are there any things that we've talked about in terms of the benefits that uh, you might have that would justify the use of the technology? Uh, and particularly as you think about that, keep in mind anywhere you have wellbore stability, lost circulation, those kind of difficulties that, that uh, you spend significant time and, and a remedial effort or in preventing, then drilling with casing might very well have an uh, application for you. Uh, thank you.